Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. Welcome to episode 3 of my Age of Empires vs. History series, where I look at the inspiration and accuracy of these civilizations as they appear in-game. This one's going to be all about the Teutons. I'll be breaking this into two main parts. The first part will be about politics and economics to give some historical context, and the second part will be about their military and how that relates to the unique unit and tech tree. To start things off, the first question is of course, who are the Teutons? Judging by their bonuses, the in-game history section, and the Barbarossa campaign, the Teutons of Age of Empires are simultaneously representing East Francia, called Regnum Teutonicum or Teutonic Kingdom in Latin, as well as the Holy Roman Empire and independent Baltic state established by the Teutonic Order. The general theme throughout is that the Teutons represent medieval Germany. Now the roots of the Holy Roman Empire actually start with the Frankish King Charlemagne in the late 700s. Despite sharing a similar culture, the German tribes never formed a unified state. It was only with Charlemagne's conquests across Western Europe that the German tribes became at least somewhat unified. Though it's easy to argue that even over the next thousand years, they never completely formed the centralized and cohesive state that a map might imply. Charlemagne resorted to violence to convert the German tribes to Christianity, in one incident allegedly killing up to 30,000 Saxons who refused to convert. Although historians think that number is highly exaggerated, it shows that it's tough business converting Teutons. Fittingly, their team bonus is that they're 50% harder to convert. Gameplay-wise, that also works well with their relatively slow units that would otherwise be easily exploited by monks. For his services towards Christianity and for keeping the threat of the Lombards in check, the Pope made Charlemagne Roman Emperor in 800. His full title was Charles Most Serene Augustus, crowned by God, great and pacific emperor governing the Roman Empire. Of course, there already was a Roman Empire, now called the Byzantine Empire, but why let little details stand in the way? This new Roman Empire contained most of modern France, Germany, Switzerland, and northern Italy. The empire split along its cultural borders soon afterward, and was divided between Charlemagne's grandsons, following Frankish tradition. The western part would eventually become France, and the easternmost part, called East Francia, would become the Holy Roman Empire. That is, until Napoleon dissolved it in 1806. In 1157, Barbarossa added the Holy to the name, though there's a bromide joke that it was neither Holy, nor Roman, nor an empire. It's been described as often little more than a loose net thrown over largely autonomous German states. These collections of fiefs and kingdoms would at times feud with each other, and to an extent had their own cultures, including local monetary and measurement systems, as well as sometimes different languages altogether. Because of this, its kings and emperors' primary focus was on maintaining central governance over their territory, rather than conquest, and is probably a reason why it was designed as one of only two defensive civilizations back in Age of Kings. The convention of a council electing the highest monarch died out in most European countries, because one dynasty eventually became dominant. But that wasn't the case in Germany, which combined the ancient Roman idea of an emperor as a divinely sanctioned ruler with the Germanic tradition of elected kingship. Right until the end of the Holy Roman Empire, the Prince Electors, or Imperial Diet, were a powerful institution that elected the emperor, who then, in theory, ruled over the German princes and numerous lords. As a result, unlike in France or England, the Holy Roman Empire never had a permanent capital city, and instead many cities grew throughout Germany, with smaller lords founding their own capitals. During wartime, villagers were given refuge in those cities, which is reflected in the extended garrison space for towers and the Teuton bonus for the town center, which has changed from expansion to expansion for balance reasons. The most influential people in those cities tended to be merchants, and trading towns formed an alliance called the Hanseatic League with its own army to protect the guild's interests and trade routes. This alliance made sure that trade cogs and caravans would be protected from pirates and outlaws in the Baltic Sea. Some merchants even went on to become so influential they could even bribe the electing lords in the election for the next emperor. One could easily argue for a trading bonus to reflect this, but instead their economic bonus is a reduced farming cost. While not quite as appropriate, the idea isn't completely without merit, as the Holy Roman Empire did have plenty of flat, fertile land to work with. But now, let's switch the focus to the military, and look at their unique unit and tech tree. The German army combined was especially large in Europe for the time, but often uncoordinated, again due to the semi-autonomous kingdoms scattered throughout it. Princes were often reluctant to send troops to the Imperial Army, which meant mercenaries were commonly employed to bolster the Imperial Army's numbers. These mercenaries were predominantly pikemen and supporting foot soldiers, and later would commonly include gunpowder weapons, like the arquebus. 
Fittingly, all of these types of units are present in the tech tree. Crossbows were commonly used as well, especially in the defense of castles, so it's interesting that the arbalester is unavailable. The Teutonic Order even included mercenary Genoese crossbowmen in its armies on occasion, but in this case, balance considerations might be playing a role. The Holy Roman Empire, of course, would have had heavily armored knights, both on horseback and on foot. A special class of knight called ministerials emerged, which could be hired out or sold between lords. Though not technically free, they also weren't exactly serfs, as they were exempt from working in the fields, and over time they eventually became a land-holding class of knights. The in-game history section references these soldiers, saying they receive the best training and equipment, which ties in nicely with the Teuton's additional melee armor for infantry and cavalry. That said, there's no obvious reason for why their light cavalry ends at the scout line, besides, again, probably balanced considerations. Taking a look now at their unique unit, it's safe to say it's one of the most popular unique units in the game, and that's the Teutonic Knight. Historically, the Teutonic Order wasn't part of the Holy Roman Empire's imperial army, nor were they significant in conflicts within the Holy Roman Empire, though they had plenty of supporters and property there. They were founded during the Third Crusade and were similar to the Knights Hospitaller and Templars, though they played a smaller role during the Crusades. Their most significant influence was first in Transylvania, aiding the Hungarians against the Cumans, and then in the Baltics, where they founded their own independent state. In contrast to the more gradual eastward expansion of the Holy Roman Empire, which was achieved primarily through immigration, the Teutonic Order conquered land held by pagans through military action, under the religious pretext of spreading Christianity. Of course, even after kingdoms like Lithuania officially converted to Christianity, the Teutons continued to fight them anyway. The Teutonic Knights in Age of Empires are best known for their extreme melee armor, which could have various inspirations. One explanation is that Knights of the Order were often from the aristocracy, so they would have been more likely able to supply horses and their own chainmail. Compared to any local militias they encountered, they would almost certainly have been impressive, and may appear invincible. The earliest Knights of the Order were also likely romanticized because of their image as veteran warriors who fought in the distant Holy Land, and the Order's strict code of self-discipline and devotion to God would also have enhanced that reputation. Design-wise, they also make for an interesting contrast to the Goths, who are also of Germanic origin, but of course take Pierce armor to a similar extreme as opposed to the Teutons and their melee armor. Teutonic Knights were also quite fond of building castles, which ties in nicely with the crenellations technology, giving castles more range, and allowing garrisoned infantry to fire additional arrows. Their original purpose in the Holy Land was to aid Christian pilgrims and to establish hospitals, hence free herbal medicine for faster healing of garrisoned units and extra healing range. Block printing is of course a given as well, considering Gutenberg was born and lived in the Holy Roman Empire. One slight nitpick to the accuracy of Teutonic Knights in the game is they're not following the proper dress code. In addition to not being allowed to display any personal coat of arms, they could only decorate their equipment and clothing with a black cross on a white background. Purple cloaks were definitely not allowed. As for the horned and winged helmets sometimes shown in popular culture, there's at least a bit of evidence something similar may have been used ceremonially, though it wouldn't have ever been used in battle. Ceremonial helmets came in all forms, and it certainly wouldn't have been the weirdest one out there. Yes, that's a helmet that looks like a mermaid, and the knight and horse are dressed up as her tail. Think of literally anything you could strap to a ceremonial helmet, and some medieval knight probably did it first. As we saw in the Lithuanians vs. History video, the Teutonic Knight is especially weak against the Lightus, which might be a reference to the Battle of Tannenberg where the Order was defeated. Their defeat at the hands of Alexander Nevsky at the Battle on the Ice was a turning point that halted their expansion east, but their loss to the Lithuanian-Polish alliance is often pointed to as the beginning of their decline. Other historically appropriate enemies would be the Magyars and Vikings, who raided the early Holy Roman Empire, as well as the Slavs, Cumans, and Italians. Continuing through their tech tree, both their access to Bombard Cannon as well as their unique tech Ironclad are probably rooted in the Bohemian tradition of building siege. The Kingdom of Bohemia was both particularly known for siege, as well as their quick adoption of gunpowder. The earliest known use of bombard cannons in Europe was by German knights during the Siege of Cividale in 1331. As well, during the Hussite Wars, Bohemian rebels used war wagons to defend their siege from knight attacks, which may also be referenced in the unique tech Ironclad. A happy coincidence is that their strong siege also makes the Teutons traditionally a good choice on the map Black Forest, and the Black Forest is in fact located in Germany. The final aspect of their tech tree is their mediocre navy. The weakness of the Imperial fleet was one of the reasons the Hansa Trading Alliance began to guard their trade cogs with private ships, as the Imperial forces couldn't guarantee the safety of the North or Baltic Sea. 
Especially in the early Middle Ages, the Vikings dominated the water, which is reflected in missing a few important naval technologies. And finally, let's finish up by looking at some of the more cultural aspects of the Teutons. Their wonder is the Maria Lock Abbey. Germans in the Middle Ages favored long churches, which wouldn't fit on the square foundation, so we get the truncated version shown in-game. There's no obvious historical significance of the abbey, and seems to just be a nice-looking building that shows off German Romanesque architecture. The Aachen Cathedral would actually have been more fitting historically, but was instead given to the Britons in Age of Kings, though their wonder has been updated in Definitive Edition to something more appropriate. In case you're wondering, the Teuton coat of arms is the German Eagle, which has been the symbol of Germany since the Middle Ages. The symbol is thought to trace its origins back to Charlemagne himself, who, as we saw, set in motion the events leading to the formation of the Holy Roman Empire. The eagle remains an iconic symbol in Germany. So that's the Teutons in Age of Empires 2 and how they compare to history. There's definitely a touch of romanticizing and some pragmatic balance decisions thrown in there, but overall there's a clear connection between the civilization's design and their historical inspiration. Big thanks to the comment X who helped a lot with the research for this video. I'm of course not a historian and this video would have taken much longer to make without him. That's all for this one though. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.